Assalamu alaikum, this is Tuka Damush. I'll be explaining the second period of chapter 1, atoms. At the end of this session, you'll be able to calculate the charge of the nucleus and the charge of the atom in coulombs, calculate the mass of the nucleus and the mass of the atom in kilogram, compare the mass of the nucleus to that of the atom, prepare your pen and your chemistry booklet. Up till now, you've learned that an atom is the basic building blocks that make up all matter and that each atom consists of three subatomic particles, each has a specific mass and a charge. Starting with the nucleus, protons and neutrons have nearly the same mass. The mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27 kilograms. Neutrons are neutral entities, however, protons are charged. The charge of a proton is a plus E, where the absolute value of E is equal to 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19 coulombs. Revolving around the nucleus are the electrons. An electron has a charge of minus E and an negligible mass. After recalling the charge and the mass of each of the subatomic particles, a question must cross to our minds. What is the mass of the whole atom? What is its charge as well? The overall charge of an atom depends on both the nucleus and the electron cloud. Let's calculate the charge of each region apart. Starting with the nucleus, the subatomic particles that constitute the nucleus are the protons and the neutrons. What is the charge of one proton? Right, it's a plus E. So what will be the charge of a three protons? Exactly, it's a plus a three E. Same questions for a neutron. If one neutron has zero charge, so what will be the charge of three neutrons? Absolutely, it's zero. And hence, if you have 100 neutrons, this will have no charge, as you might have already guessed from its name. Neutrons are neutral. We can conclude that neutrons do not contribute to the charge of the nucleus, while protons define its entire charge. Let's prove that by calculation. The nuclear charge, also abbreviated as a Q nucleus, equal to the number of a proton multiplied by the charge of a proton plus number of neutrons multiplied by the charge of a neutron. As discussed previously, neutrons do not affect the charge of the nucleus, hence the charge of the nucleus equal to the number of protons multiplied by the charge of a proton. Now do simple substitution. Number of a proton could be substituted by Z and the charge of a proton could be substituted by plus E. So the formula will be Q equal plus ZE. So to calculate the charge of the nucleus, we use the formula Q equal plus ZE, where Z is the atomic number which is equal to the number of protons, and E is the elementary charge, which is equal to 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19 coulombs. Now let's move to the electron cloud. The charge of the electron cloud depends on the electron. So if one electron has a charge of minus E, what will be the charge of three electrons? Obviously, it's minus a 3e. So to calculate the charge of the electron cloud, you can use this formula. Number of electrons multiplied by the charge of an electron. Let's do simple substitution. Number of electron is equal to the number of proton in a neutral atom. Also, number of proton is equal to the atomic number z. So by substitution, number of electron is equal to the atomic number z. Now in the formula, replace number of electrons by z and the charge of an electron by minus e. So the relation will be q electron cloud equal minus z e. Back to the first question, what's the charge of an entire atom? Right, it's the sum of the charge of its nucleus and its electron cloud. So if the charge of the nucleus is a plus ZE and that of an electron cloud is minus ZE, so the sum of opposite numbers is zero. Overall, the atom is electrically neutral. We've ended up with one relation, Q equal plus ZE for the charge of the nucleus and minus ZE for the charge of the electron cloud. We can derive one more relation, Z equal to the absolute value of Q over E we use the absolute value since z is a positive number. Sometimes you are asked to verify the value of the elementary charge. So the elementary charge E is equal to the absolute value of Q over z. 
Now pause the video, refer to worksheet 1 of your worksheet booklet and solve application 2. We'll come back. It's time to correct the application. A sodium atom is represented as an A1123. Let's remember together, what does each number represent? 11. It's the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. 23 is the mass number, which represents the number of nucleons. First the question, how many neutrons does this atom have? So as known previously, A equals Z plus N, so N equals A minus Z, 23 minus 11 equals to 12. So the atom has 12 neutrons. Number 2. What is in coulombs the charge of its nucleus? So we use the formula Q equal plus ZE. Z is 11 multiplied by E which is given 1.6 times 10 to power minus 19. So the answer will be plus 17.6 times 10 to power minus 19 coulombs. Move to another application. In this application, you are given the nuclear charge of an atom X, which is a plus 41.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, as well as the elementary charge. Part 1. Deduce the charge of the electron cloud of X. As learned in grade 9, when you are asked to deduce the electron cloud charge and you are given the nuclear charge or vice versa, you have to deduce that from the overall charge of the atom. So you must move in this sequence. Charge of the atom is equal to the charge of the nucleus plus charge of the electron cloud. Since an atom is a neutral, the sum of the charge of the nucleus and the electron cloud is equal to zero. So charge of the electron cloud equal minus the charge of the nucleus equal minus 41.6 times 10 to power minus 19 coulombs. Part two, determine its atomic number. You'll use the relation Q of the nucleus equal to plus ZE. So Z is the absolute value of Q over E, which is equal to 26. After you thoroughly understood the concept of atomic charge, let's discuss the notion of atomic mass. So, what atomic mass could be? Suppose that you have a bag that is made up of extremely thin material, so thin that it almost doesn't have mass of its own. Now we fill this bag with some stuff inside. If this bag is placed on a weight scale, can we say that the total mass of the bag is the sum of the mass of all objects inside it? Absolutely. Similarly, the mass of an atom could be calculated with the help of the subatomic particles in it. But we know that among all subatomic particles, electrons have negligible mass. That is almost massless. So what are we left with? Yes. We have both the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus, and since both of them have significant mass, they will both contribute to the mass of an atom. Let's prove that by calculation through application 3 in worksheet 1 of your worksheet booklet. In application 3, you are given the nuclide structure of iron. Part 1. What's the mass of its nucleus in kilogram? The mass of the nucleus is equal to the mass of all the protons plus the mass of all the neutrons, which is equal to the number of protons multiplied by the mass of a proton plus number of neutrons multiplied by the mass of a neutron. Since the atomic number Z is equal to the number of a proton, now replace the number of a proton by Z. The relation is Z multiplied by the mass of a proton plus N which is the number of neutrons multiplied by the mass of a neutron. Since the mass of a proton is equal to that of a neutron, now let's take a common factor, the mass m. I would call it the mass of a nucleon, since it represents the mass of either a proton or a neutron. So the mass of a nucleon into z plus n, where z plus n represents the mass number a. So we've ended up with the relation mass of the nucleus is equal to a multiplied by the mass of a nucleon. In general, if you are asked to calculate the mass of the nucleus in AMU, just substitute the mass of a nucleon by 1 AMU. In the application, the mass number of iron atom is 56, so the answer will be 56 AMU. But in this application, you are asked to calculate the mass of the nucleus in kilogram. 
So it's a just a simple conversion. If you want to convert from AMU to kilogram, remember that 1 AMU is equivalent to 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27 kilogram. So you have to multiply the number 56 by 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27. The answer is 93.52 times 10 to power minus 27 kilograms. Move to the second part. What is the total mass of iron atom in kilogram? The mass of an atom is obtained by adding the mass of its nucleus to the mass of its electron cloud. So it's the sum of the masses of all the subatomic particles. And since the mass of an electron is negligible, the total mass of an atom is equal to that of the nucleus, which is equal to 9.35 times 10 to power minus 26 kilogram, as calculated in part 1. Move to the last part. What do you notice? We notice that the mass of an atom is concentrated in its nucleus, and therefore, the total mass of an atom is equal to the mass of its nucleus. Now let's make a quick summary for what we have discussed so far. The total mass of the atom is equal to the mass of its nucleus. To calculate the mass of the atom, we use the relation A multiplied by the mass of a nucleon. The mass of the atom could be either expressed in AMU or in kilogram. To calculate the mass of the atom in AMU, it's simply equal to the mass number A, but in unit U or AMU. To convert from AMU to kilogram, simply multiply the mass in AMU by 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27. Now it's time to evaluate yourselves. Let's start with a simple application. Determine the mass in kilogram of a bromine. In this application, you are given the shorthand notation of a bromine, where the number 81 represents its mass number. So you'll use the relation mass of the atom equal A multiplied by the mass of a nucleon. A is given as well as the mass of a nucleon. Now simple substitution, 81 multiplied by 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27. The answer is 135.27 times 10 to power minus 27 kilogram. Pay attention not to forget the unit of mass. A bit harder application. Determine the mass number of an atom X which has the atomic mass of 3.841 times 10 to power minus 26 kilograms. Now it's your turn to think deeply of the question. I'll count down to 5, then I'll be back to correct it. Time's over, dear. Now let's discuss the answer. In this application, you are asked to calculate the mass number of an atom X, and you only have its atomic mass. So the only relation between the atomic mass and the mass number is the one that is learned right now. The mass of the atom is equal to A multiplied by the mass of a nucleon. So let's find A in terms of the others. A is equal to the mass of the atom over the mass of a nucleon. Now substitute the numbers 3.841 times 10 to the power minus 26 kg over the mass of a nucleon, which is 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg. The answer is a 23. Keep in your mind that the mass number is always unitless. A bit harder application for the brilliant students. Determine the number of the neutrons of an atom X, which has the atomic mass of 2.004 times 10 to the power minus 26 kilograms and 6 positively charged particles. In this application, we're going to move in a certain sequence to find the answer. First of all, from the given atomic mass, we're going to calculate the mass number A. From the mass number A and the number of positively charged particles, we're going to calculate the number of the neutrons. Let's check how. Using the relation mass of the atom equal to A multiplied by the mass of the nucleon, we can calculate the mass number A. So A equal to the mass of the atom over the mass of a nucleon, which is equal to 12. We already know that the number of positively charged particles is equal to the number of protons, which is equal to the atomic number Z. So Z equal to 6. And finally, N equal A minus Z. 12 minus 6 equal to 6, and hence the atom X will have 6 neutrons. Finally, it's time to summarize. In this session, we've learned how to calculate the charge at the mass of an entire atom. 
To calculate the charge of the nucleus, we use the relation Q equal to plus ZE, while Q equal to minus ZE is used to calculate the charge of the electron cloud. Since the charge of the nucleus is opposite to the charge of the electron cloud, an atom is considered to be electrically neutral. The mass of the atom is concentrated in its nucleus. To calculate the mass of the atom, use the relation A multiplied by the mass of a nucleon. For the next period, please watch the video again and referring to worksheet 1 of your worksheet booklet, solve the questions number 2, 3, part A and 5. Keep calm and do your homework.